Meeting number 16 between Georgetown and Xavier nearing tip-off here from McDonough Arena as we take a look at the starting lineups. They're presented by Jeep Grand Cherokee, and for this Georgetown team, they've used nine different starting lineups this season. Brianna Jones, the senior, accompanies Barnes in the backcourt for Xavier. Their backcourt led by Aaliyah Dunham, the junior point guard. She will be assigned to guard Barnes tonight. Our officials, the veteran crew, Ed Sidlowski, Tiara Cruz, Karen Priado. These two teams looking to find a victory here and get some momentum as we get into the thick of things in Big East play. Xavier in the road blue, Georgetown in the home gray, and the tip to the Musketeers. What are you looking for early? Well, I want to see tempo, John. We had an opportunity to catch both teams during shoot-around, and Coach Melanie Moore jumped in with her squad in terms of passing and efficiency. This group has to play with pace and give the ball some snap. Barnes gives this Georgetown team some snap. At three off for Osagi Aresi, and here come the Musketeers, looking to play a faster pace under first-year head coach Melanie Moore. Yeah, but the thing about fast is speed can kill if you are not under control and very deliberate with what you're doing with the basketball. Gray with two shots. She doesn't hesitate. Two misses to get it started. Georgetown with one Big East win that coming two weekends ago against Providence. Nice pass from Barnes. That one doesn't go. Kalava fighting for it. And Xavier comes up with it. Here comes Dunham. Musketeers can really shoot it from three. Second in the Big East at 37% from distance. It's promising that this group is starting to shoot the basketball so well. They have to continue to have confidence. Coach told us that she's got kids averaging about three threes a game. She'd like to see that number get to five. Ari Gray has plenty of confidence. Ari Gray has tons of confidence, and she should, especially in the paint. I like the confidence in her ability to shoot the three now. It's not yet at a high clip, but she's working on it. And she told us, John, straight up, she feels disrespected when teams slouch off of her. Osagi Aresi with the answer. The senior who had played just 89 minutes in her first three seasons at Georgetown now making the most of a starting role. I had an opportunity to talk with Morgan Smith a bit who was out with an injury for the Hoyas, but she talked about Marv as they affectionately call her and the energy that she brings for this squad. Really is special to see a senior making the most of her opportunity. Dunham from the corner. Carries the triple. Ari to Aaliyah. The A's connected on a little bit of hammer action, as they call it in the NBA. That's got a ring to it. I, you know, the, the when I A's. heard the term, I was like, wait, what, what's that? I like it, though, right? <laughs> Barnes the give down low. One just off. A second close miss for Georgetown from Bennett. Here's Gray, head of steam. Bennett met her at the 10. Nice job by the freshman defensively. Very, very smart move by Bennett. Understanding that Gray is far more, that more athletic, but she got in position and did exactly what she was supposed to do. Textbook defense. That's where all that work throughout the week pays off. Indeed, you're listening to the scout. And when we talk with Georgetown about that victory over Providence, as we've got a foul here. Let's take a look at Ariana Gray. Ari, if you know her well. Oh, I love an up and under, John. Very simple, under control, not traveling. Then here, attacking the paint because she knows that the defense is going to clap, collapse, finding your open shooter in the corner. Ariana Gray averaging 11 and 9 against these Hoyas last year as Bennett's fouled on the floor. Melanie Moore, in her first season as a head coach here at Xavier, has quite the resume both as a coach and a player coming over from the Michigan Wolverines, was part of three NCAA tournament trips. She's got the pedigree under Kim Barnes and Rico as Georgetown gets on the board with that basket by Marv. Um, but, you know, for Griffin, uh, or excuse me, for Moore, her energy is just infectious, John. Here's Gray on the pull-up. Just short. Marvelous, Asagi Aresi up the floor to Barnes. And Barnes with the push-off charge. Hmm. Speed. We talked about speed sometimes being a killer. Jimmy Howard in year three as the head coach at Georgetown. And he really challenged his team after a loss at Seton Hall Sunday. He said, we have got to be flat out better. And his team said they took that. It was sharp criticism, but they'd like to show a response here tonight. You don't get to this point as an athlete, as a competitor, without wanting to win. Gary Gross 
threads the needle and lays it in. So one of my favorite things to find out from coaches is who's the player that you would consider to be your X Factor. And for Coach Moore, she said that it was Carrie Gross because of her ability both defensively and offensively. A foul on Dunham. Xavier going to the bench here to Ayanna Townsend, the redshirt freshman. Received a medical redshirt after a season-ending injury last season. She comes in for Gray. Gives the squad some solid shots. Townsend at 6'2", and Sarah Leindecker at 6'4". Caleb Hunt with the kick out. Pull up three for Barnes, who's just off. Xavier looking for the first Big East win in the Mel Moore era. You said it, Monica. The energy is infectious. We were at their shoot around, and she just oozed with passion. Wasselson just spins out. Oh, man, iron and kind on that one, John. Hey, when you're the Big East visitor. It's true, but I love Lauren Wasselson's ability to stretch the floor. We've seen her hit some threes with some range over the course of her career. Illegal screen this time on Bennett. And it'll go back to Xavier. What do you make of the Musketeers start? Well, I think they've gotten solid field goal opportunities, as you just saw that, saw that shot by Lauren kind of rim out. I thought Ari got a couple of good looks inside the paint. They've got to continue to attack. I mean, you can't stop shooting because you missed a few, then you'll never make it. Here's Courtney Pranger, a freshman, and that's a theme for both these teams. They lost impact players, and now you've got freshman classes trying to step up. Georgetown, most notably, with Dorothy Adamako, Deanna White, graduate. Dorothy Adamako overseas now, doing her thing. Uh, you know, John, it's, it's interesting. I think I have to give credit to coaches. They have such a tough job. You have this talent in front of you, but you also kind of have an eye on the future. And so you wonder, has your squad been prepared? haven't been able to rely on such talented players. Pull up from Pranger, and she knocks it down. The freshman comes right in, and it's sizzling. Kept that ball high on the catch in the paint. A high percentage opportunity gets it to fall. Now Brenner with some defense. Well, Asagi Arensi gets it back. So a sharp start for Xavier, but they know they're capable of that. Melanie Moore wants to see 40 minutes. Yeah, and, and you know that's tough when you've got a young group. If you've got a loose ball, you love to see the energy diving on the floor. The Musketeers getting after it and forcing the jump ball. Xavier in our nation's capital looking for a first Big East win in road fashion tonight. Sunday on Fox.
Xavier off to a strong start, up by five. Five minutes in here with the Georgetown Hoyas. Monica McNutt, John Fanta with you from D.C. Xavier all over the passing lanes thus far. Five on the timer. And the Hoyas, Xavier forcing the turnover now. And on the break, it's 11-4 Musketeers. That's the type of basketball that Coach Moore wants to see her group playing. As you see her over on the sideline, all pumped up. Transition basketball, quick, putting pressure on defenses, and getting out and scoring, as opposed to having to labor in the half-court set. It's Kerry Grouse, the sophomore, an X-factor for Xavier, who did not play against Butler. That was a big loss for them in the 78-70 defeat, as Barnes gets on the board for the first time tonight. Brianna Jones is having a solid start. She's gotten two good looks. Second one falls. She's a kid that is invested in terms of team dynamics and leadership and really wants to see her teammates succeed. That's the type of energy you need in the locker room. Absolutely. I mean, the, the Big East conference play is, it can be grueling. Brianna Jones, five unanswered. Quickly closing the gap for the Hoyas. Graduate guard, a Louisville transfer at 11 points last weekend against Seton Hall. And heating up early on. Here's Pranger. And her shot altered. Kaleva stepping in. Kaleva. Now off to Jones again. That shot, though. A little bit of a heat check there, John. Deflection off a musketeer. I did. I tell you what I did like about that possession for the Hoyas. Taylor Barnes, we talked about her being the graduate transfer from Memphis. She understands, hey, my teammate is hot. I'm going to continue to try to find her. That was a good look for Brianna Jones. That time, maybe not getting her feet set and getting the arc that she needs and the distance that she needs up under the basketball, but smart on Barnes to keep going to the hot hand. That's the type of aggressiveness Jimmy Howard has been looking for from his team offensively. Flat out back. Better. Everybody has to be better. I have to be better at the guard spot in terms of setting my teammates up. I have to be better as a scorer. And Perry Gross, she's, she's been pretty good. The X Factor for Xavier with four. Man, I, I think there's something about when a coach appoints an X Factor, at least when we do games together, John. I think it's a good thing. They rise to the occasion. <laughs> Coming off a concussion injury, and she looks A-OK -okay to start here. It also doesn't hurt that this is her hometown, home region, we should say. From Clinton, Maryland, Kayla Bowen will head to the free throw line. As Gray charged with the foul. And that is Gray's second, which is big for Xavier. Exactly what Georgetown wanted to do, get the leading Big East rebounder in foul trouble. Ari just plays with so much passion. She's now a junior. She's, she's got to do a better job at this point of understanding it is for her to be on the floor for this squad. And she's got to think through some of those fouls a bit. Maybe you move your feet. Maybe you don't reach. She's athletic enough to compensate. She doesn't necessarily have to reach in. It'll be interesting to see what Melanie Moore does in terms of balancing that. You've got two fouls, but she's their best player. And now an illegal screen on the Musketeers. This one on Gross. Yeah, Lauren Wasserson is coming off that baseline ready. As shooter should be, she was good and ready. But Gross didn't have her feet set and gets popped for the illegal screen. In Gray's absence, you've got to wonder about the defensive connection, too, of this unit. Gray's their lead communicator defensively. Caleb off. And the blocking foul call on Pranger. That'll send Caleb back to the line. Xavier folks didn't necessarily love that call, but technically, Pranger was not in position. A strong, aggressive take by Kalova. Melanie Moore with a discussion. Kalova, 13 for 14 from the free throw line this year. Take another look at this. So Kalova attacks to her right. Pranger just a half a step late. I believe she would have been outside of the restricted area. But I don't, I don't think she got there in time, more importantly. How many charges did you take in your career? John, why do you have to put me on blast? That was not a strength of mine. <laughs> I don't think I took any in my collegiate career. The few times I tried, they were blocked, and so I stopped trying. I thought somewhere on the run to the second week in the NCAA tournament, you might have taken a charge. Listen, let's, we'll, we'll put up some highlights one day as Aaliyah Dunham does what I did, stand behind the arc and knock down threes. Dunham with her second tray of the quarter. 
Xavier sharp to start offensively. Seven for their first 15. And a foul on the shot. Yeah, <laughs> Lauren Wasserson, she's got that fake outrage, but girl, you cannot smack Brianna Jones all on the arms and give her a high five and not expect to get a whistle. Let's get another look at this. Oh, baby. Lauren, you know better. Uh, now, if it was reversed, Lauren would absolutely want to call. You cannot tap a shooter on the elbow. That is a no-no. Jones hitting the first free throw. 65% free throw shooter. And at Louisville, she went to the NCAA tournament, appeared in two games. Was a top-ranked recruit out of North Babylon High School, and now is providing the leadership for this group. Indeed, and I, when Brianna joined this program, that was one of the things that Coach Howard and his staff were most excited about. How about the engagement of Caleb on both ends? She's great. She's active, and I think it's funny. You and I both have had plenty of opportunities to talk with Coach Doug Bruno about the international style of play, and Anita Kaleva, Kaleva brings that. I mean, she's, she's active, she thinks the game well, her hands are always going. It'll stay with the Musketeers, Gross fighting for that rebound, and they call it off of Jones. And the Musketeers, shot clock resetting to 20 seconds, just like the men's game this year. Dunham has been hot early. I thought she would have looked at Pranger for the slip there, but Georgetown did a good job of covering it. And she gets the screen with eight on the shot clock. Wasselson, she's a sharpshooter too. This time she's stuck. And the Hoyas come up with a shot clock violation. Shania Wright gets in there for the block at the last second, although I probably think it would have been a violation either way. Georgetown answering the 11-4 Xavier run with a 10-5 surge here. Fun first quarter, Caleb on, feeling it. You can tell that Georgetown is playing with confidence. We talked about the snap and the way the basketball moves. Sometimes people think that pace is only up and down. There's also a pace and a rhythm to smart basketball in the half court set. Five points for the senior from Croatia. Dunham off the dribble. Lion Decker was fouled. It's on the floor. Kalova in the corner, spots up after the penetration. <clears throat> Excuse me, by Nikola, Nikolai Ko Kovacikova. That's a name, John. Nikki Kovacikova. <laughs> Wasselson, ball fake, three. Buries the three. And Xavier continues to stroke it from deep. Lauren Wasselson is one of those kids that could be at the Final Four that weekend if her team's not playing in, in the three-point shooting contest. I love the way she can shoot the basketball. What a first quarter for these two teams. It's Jones off this time, but it'll stay with the Hoyas with 10.3 left. Melody Moore heading back to her bench with Townsend in. Kayla Vaughn left open, just long. Lion never with the rebound. They've got plenty of time. Here's Dunham with three. This is who you want to have the ball. Off to Lion Decker to beat the buzzer. She got it. She got it. What a start for the Musketeers. That's a big time shot from Sarah Lion Decker. The Hoyas have an injury, though, on the other end. Time winding down to end the quarter. Find a shooter. Gotta have that ball ready. High release, ready to rock and roll. Bottom of the net for Sarah Lion Decker.
Georgetown sophomore Shania Wright limping off at the end of the first quarter with a rolled ankle. Tough injury. You never want to see a player go down, but we certainly hope that it's something that she can bounce back from. There it is. Her right ankle. She just kind of hit the ground and she was hanging out there for a little bit. Um, so on the one hand, thankful that it is an ankle. I, the way she fell, because I only saw her on the ground, I thought it might have been a back or something. So looks like she'll get that ankle brace laced a little tighter. And some, sometimes you just got to play through those and keep them moving before they get super stiff. Xavier, what a way to cap off the first quarter. Two threes. Sarah Leyendecker with a dagger. An exclamation point to cap off the first 10 minutes. How about the Musketeers? Despite a 13-game losing streak, you would not know it. Well, that's why we play the game. I mean, if what you did in the previous game rolled over, I don't know that I would play basketball if I came into a new game with a detriment because of my last performance. But this team, they told us, John, whether it was Coach Moore or Ari, they told us we're, we're right there. We're right there. We got to put together a whole game. We're right there. Oh, has come up with a stop this time. Kovacikova hoist and hits, and the three-point shooting frenzy continues. Fantastic ball movement for the Hoyas. Quick, smart decision-making. We've had six made trifectas already. Watch the screens that Xavier is setting. They've got to be mindful to get good screens. And the person using the screen should do a good job of setting it up to get the most efficient use out of it as they run out of time on the shot clock. Bosselson with a heave, and the Hoyas come up with another stop. Now looking to run. Georgetown did a great job of defending those screens. Taylor Jones, or Taylor Barnes, excuse me, just a little bit ahead of herself. She saw Cassie Gordon running that break with her ball a little too high for Cassie. She only checks in at 5'10". Need to be about 6'4 <laughs> to grab that one. <laughs> Nonetheless, what we just saw there was the Hoyas are always going to look to run. Indeed, and that's where they are at their best. And if they're not running, the possession previous to that was three passes and a good shot. Now a steal for Kovacikova and the handles from the Slovakia native. Nice Great dish pass. on the break. Everything but the finish. But it'll stay with Georgetown. Man, wow. That, is, that was a highlight waiting to happen. The defense first, dropping into help side. It doesn't get much better than that. And then the nifty handle, handle of the rock, the bounce pass. And, and then it stops there, John. <laughs> Caleb off the dribble. Shot set back by Thompson. Kick to the corner. Gordon for three. Just short, but another offensive rebound. And the putback is good for Tiana Jones. You love to see that type of energy. Now, I will say, with these substitutions, Kovacikova, Cassie Gordon, Tiana Jones, the pace for the Hoyas has seemed to pick up just a little bit. It's teetering on the bit, teetering on the conversation of a little bit out of control as we've seen two Aaron passes. But a bucket like that and the energy, you, you can't be mad at that. They have three that to the basket. Now with it again, it can take the lead. And Jones is feeling it. <laughs> you know how, well, do you know how this goes, John? When you hit a basket, you got a little extra bounce and run back a little bit different because you, you're kind of feeling it. That's I know how it feels. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> just haven't felt it in a while. <laughs> That's what Jones just gave us. Ryan Decker foul underneath. And will send the sophomore to the charity strike. All right, so you love this. One dribble, rhythm dribble, set up. And in this instance, the height becomes a factor for Tiana Jones. She does a great job. She's got long limbs. She checks in at 6'2". She just elevates over the smaller defender. Sarah Leyendecker off on the first. A Cincinnati, Ohio native. Her mom, Connie, played basketball at Xavier from 1982 to 85. Now transferring in from Akron and playing an impact role for the Musketeers, tying this game up at 23. 
She's hit some very timely baskets. Now, let's not forget about that three that she hit to end the first quarter. That's the type of momentum the Musketeers have been looking for in-game. Now, the, the, and here's the thing about momentum. You have to continue to create it. Does that make sense? I mean, there's a momentum play at the end of the third quarter, or excuse me, the first quarter. Whoa, let's not speed up the game. You get a big basket at the end of the first quarter. You come out. You're not going to make every shot, and I get that, but you've got to maintain your constitution on defense because you've got to allow the offensive energy to carry over on the defensive side. Pull up was sent away, Wasselson. Big time play by Lauren Wasselson. She's had some shot blocking tonight. Indeed, and I like the energy that both of the teams on the squad on the floor right now are playing with. Both coaches have made some substitutions. Tiana, oh boy, Tiana Barnes bringing a lot of energy. Kovacikova off the pull up and a timeout for Xavier as the Hoyas take the lead. Fantastic attention to detail on the defensive end for the Hoyas. Tiana Jones using her limbs to get in there and deflect passes. Then Kovacikova, the pull up in transition, cool, calm, collected. Hoyas with a two point lead. Now only a S2 College Hoops is driven by Jeep Grand Cherokee. Look at Washington, D.C. Beautiful on a Friday night. Let's go inside the huddle with Xavier head coach Melanie Moore. All right, couple things. We gave up a lot of middle drives because when we're closing out, when we're closing out, this is 23. We're over here. We're giving her this, and then she's pulling. I love that. I love that. I mean, the attention to detail on defense. We talked about 23. Tiana Jones has gone off a little bit for the Hoyas. And then offensively, you have to put pressure on the defense. But there have been multiple turnovers in the paint from the guards for Xavier. Franger called for a three-second violation. On the other side, how have you seen Georgetown adjust? 
the pace. I think Georgetown is playing with their ideal pace so far in this game and in the half court. They've done a terrific job of defending the screens that Xavier is setting. Now, to counter that, Xavier's going to have to do a better job of setting up the use of those screens because it's, it's very easy to defend right now. Fossil still with a deflection. Had a block earlier and now forces the turnover. Active hands, active hands make a world of difference. Gross. A little bit wild there. Kramer mixing it up in the backcourt. Oh, we got a Big East mix up here. And a jump ball possession with the Hoyas. And this is where we talk about speed potentially killing. Both of these teams want to get up and down the floor. And when you look at some of their stats on the season, they mirror one another. Xavier averages a few more points than Georgetown at 62 as opposed to 57. But you look at that rebounding difference between the two teams. It's only about a two rebound difference. So this is a good matchup for both of these groups. And for both these teams with youth, the coaches both said the only way that you can learn how to win is by being in these situations. Absolutely, and, and it can be frustrating when you have young teams, but you've got to understand the growing things serve their purpose in the long run as we get a nifty attack to the baseline from Kovacikova. And a whistle and a foul on the Musketeers. Trying to get after the rebound. There's Wasselson who's been so active defensively. I do like that Xavier listened to their head coach and made the adjustments. The way that they closed out on those last two possessions, you could tell that was something that they were focused on. Wasselson on the drive, but Bennett stood in and wasn't going to let her pass her. Great defense by Grace Ann Bennett. Sunday, Russell Wilson leads the Seahawks into Lambeau for a showdown against Aaron Rodgers and the Packers in the NFC Divisional Round. It all starts at 6 Eastern on Fox and the Fox Sports app. And the winner <laughs> will get either the Niners or Chris Withers Vikings. <laughs> I really wish we, every now and again we could have a producer cam or producer audio. <laughs> According to our producer, the winner will face the Vikings. Yes. <laughs> What a big weekend in the NFL. I'm glad to start it with you here. Some women's college hoops. Townsend back in. And the situation for Xavier right now, Monica. Ariana Gray in foul trouble. So that's a kickball to stay with the Hoyas. So Melanie Moore's playing chess. Indeed. And so we got Ariana Gray, who was a player certainly to watch for Xavier. On the other end for the Hoyas, Taylor Barnes has not been on the floor. The really, I believe since the second quarter. I need to check officially. Yeah, has not played in the second quarter yet. on the Jeep Grand Cherokee Halftime Report. We'll join Rob Stone, Donnie Marshall, and Chris Mullen as they preview two great matchups in Big East men's play tomorrow. Brayden will battle Xavier on Fox, and Georgetown will take on Villanova. It's coming up at the half from beautiful Los Angeles. Oh, it must be nice. The bank is open in D.C., Brianna Jones. The bank is open. What were those matchups? Xavier and Creighton and Villanova Georgetown? Yeah. Mm. Should be fun. Patrick Ewing and his Hoyas fresh off their first Big East win. Yeah, a commanding win over St. John's. Townsend will head to the free throw line. Bennett with the foul. What do you think is going on in Melanie Moore's mind with it now being a four-point Hoyas lead and her star player, Gray, with the two fouls? Well, if she subscribes to the two and you're out, no question, I think she's breathing. She's okay. Four is not out of control by any means. You're sending a player to the free throw line, which means your team is doing a good job of putting pressure on the defense. I think she probably has to coach this group up the most on defense because this seemed to be one of the more efficient scoring groups for the Hoyas. So they've got to remember, as we heard her inside the huddle, they've got to close out. They can't give up those good looks. Jimmy Howard will talk with his team. A timeout for the Hoyas, who have the four-point advantage here at home. We'll see what they come out with offensively on the other side of the break.
Georgetown Hoyas back home and looking for Big East win number two. Up four right now. Let's see what they come out of this timeout with. The floater that was altered by two Musketeers, and that's not what Jimmy Howard wanted to see. I like the aggression by Tyana Jones, but you've got time. You've got time. Gross with the feed. Three just a little long. And a foul on the rebound by Lion Decker. Wow, that was a tough call. Lion Decker just sort of in the wrong spot at the wrong time. But, you know, next time down when we get a Georgetown defensive opportunity, watch the way that Kovachikova is hollering and screaming and pointing and directing traffic on defense. And take a look with the basketball now is Kovachikova. Take a look at her on D. Next trip down. Now here's Jones, who's feeling it with nine points off this time, but no for the back call on Tiana Jones. You love the energy that she brings, but as a sophomore, still looking to sort of hone that fire, shall we say. That just comes with experience. And it does, it does. And some players pick up on it sooner than others. I certainly would rather have someone that comes out with her competitive tenacity energy as opposed to not. It's just about understanding when and where and how. Who helped you the most at Georgetown when you were coming in with managing everything going on? So, Intensity, balance? So, <laughs> so funny story. Corey McNeil, he and his wife are now head and associate head coach, I believe, at East Carolina. Corey McNeil was an assistant here at Georgetown. Sarah Lyon Decker with a big time move under the basket. And get this, John, our first preseason workout he threatened to put me out. Wow. Because I was very happy. Like, very happy. I'm going to work hard. It's intense, but I'm going to keep the smile on my face. And that just did not jive well with Corey. <laughs> so he thought I wasn't taking it seriously, but I just was genuinely happy. Anyway, long story short, we go on. He goes on to be my favorite coach to work out with. We understand one another. Jones is foul on the drive, and Tiana Jones' aggressiveness paying off for two free throws. Indeed, and so while Corey and I expressed our intensity differently, we ultimately shared the same goal. I wonder, I gotta call him. I wonder if he remembers that. <laughs> he was gonna... He was going to put me out of, the, out of the gym for being aggressive in a different way, as you see Tiana Jones. See, that's smart. That's smart. She's attacking her right hand, sees the traffic. Defense is not necessarily ready for her. Earns a trip to the free throw line. In and out on the first. Jones, a junior from Edmond, Oklahoma. And she was the key to the Big East win over Providence. 14 points, 8 rebounds. Has brought the aggressiveness tonight, but this time an empty trip at the charity strike. Ooh, John, nothing, nothing burns me up more than this free throw. And Sharps capitalizes. That's a big time basket. You talk about the momentum. It gives Xavier a one-point lead and a semi-transition. We'll, we'll call it semi-transition. Morgan Sharps, the freshman, has 12 against Butler and paying off now. 12 on the timer, Kovacikova. Gordon inside, Mayfield, the turn, and she traveled with the basketball before it went in. Yeah, she, she had the right idea, didn't quite have her footwork together. So this is the type of speed that Coach Melmore wants to see her squad playing with. Aaliyah Dunham pitching that ball up ahead, finding Sharks. No question, the shot goes up with confidence, it finds the bottom of the net. Oregon Sharps, just a freshman from Granville, Ohio. And Melanie Moore says she's really starting to embrace what we're putting down for her. Adjusting from that pace in high school to college. Yeah, that, the learning curve whew, from one level to the next. It can be a doozy. Here's Sharks with an out. Off the screen from Townsend with 12. When Xavier needs to study things, they give it to Dunham, who has it. On the drive, Aliyah Dunham all the way, and Xavier's up three. Textbook, change of speed, change of direction. That's how you put pressures on the defense. And ever so hesitant, and hesitant, ever so subtle, in and out hesitation dribble from Aliyah Dunham in the lane parts wide open. A 7-0 Musketeer surge. Back door left open. Barnes was fouled by Thompson. Great pass. Marvelous, Osaji Oresi. Here's, you see it? Did you catch it? That in and out dribble caught Taylor Barnes, and then Brianna Mayfield wasn't in position to help. Aaliyah Dunham with the finish. On the other end, 
The pass prior to the shot attempt by Taylor Barnes. Great read by Marvelous Osagi Oresi. And then Ayanna Thompson, just, just a little late. But I tell you what, if Georgetown continues to shoot free throws this way, those are fouls that you'll just absorb. Now five for nine from the free throw line. Make it six for 10. And we've got a two point game. We told you tonight, these two teams are looking to find their winning ways, and you could sense the intensity from the get-go as Dunham pulls and buries the tray. Aaliyah Dunham. A little bit of confusion on Georgetown's part in terms of how they wanted to guard the screen. Aaliyah Dunham, hand down, man down. We said Taylor Barnes was the guard to watch, and Dunham's got 11 points and four assists. She has done a tremendous job of pacing her squad. And now Xavier in a zone. Osagi Oresi can't hit. Here come the Musketeers with a four on two. Sharps off to Dunham, who's feeling it. Sharps, the freshman, can't hit. It'll stay with the Musketeers. I actually would have liked to see Sharps go the other way. Here's Aaliyah Dunham behind. It almost serves as a screen. <laughs> Well, it's it was a screen. Oh, but so it's a screen. how about the reaction? The three point, the three points to the crown. Sharps for three, and Morgan Sharps, the freshman, with her second trifecta. Listen, the rim is starting to open up for the Musketeers. But coach told us about this, John. She talked about her group shooting with confidence and the difference that it makes. Xavier is seven for eleven from distance. Georgetown's got to figure out how they're going to adjust defensively. They've got to close out on those shooters. And now Jones getting swarmed, eight on the shot clock. Barnes looking to make a play. Lost the basketball, got it back, and now gives it off. Look at the way that the Musketeers were swarming defensively, though. Sarah Leyendecker pushing Krings out of the way so that she could match up with Brianna Mayfield and then diving back into the action with Sharks. That's just great communication on defense. The Xavier Musketeers have not won in over two months. Aaliyah Dunham wants to end it. Can't hit the runner. And with five to go, the Hoyas, they throw this away. And the door cracked back open for Xavier. I think Tiana Jones lost track of how much time was left on the clock. Three seconds, you can get a shot off in three seconds if you execute well. Chance for a first half dagger with one, and they ran out of time. Nonetheless, Xavier on fire from beyond the arc, seven for 11 from three, and Aaliyah Dunham with 11 points. Our score at the half, Xavier 36, Georgetown 28. Coming up, Rob Stone, Donnie Marshall, and Chris Mullen preview a big Saturday in the Big East. And Monica and I will be back to recap the first half right here on FS2.
welcome you to the Jeep Grand Cherokee Halftime Report. Rob Stone, Chris Mullen, Donnie Marshall in studio with you. We have three men's games from the Big East and the Big Ten. Coming up on the Fox Family of Networks tomorrow, starting on Fox, 11th-ranked Ohio State on the road in Bloomington, taking on Indiana, 11.30 a.m. Eastern. That one followed by Creighton and Xavier, 2 Eastern. And then over on FS1, Georgetown on the road at number 16 Villanova. That one at 11.30 Eastern. All three games also streaming live on the Fox Sports app. Let's start with Creighton and Xavier. The Musketeers Wednesday lost to Seton Hall by 12. They only got three bench points. The story for them, point-wise at least, Tyreek Jones, team high 19 and nine boards. The story has to be Tyreek Jones again going forward for Xavier. Well, it has to be Tyreek Jones early in the game. He's just one of those players. He's an emotional guy. If he gets touches early, even make or miss, if you give him touches early, he feels now a sense of leadership, a sense of, okay, I have to put this team on my back. I have to lead them. If you completely abandon him and you start shooting jump shots and not a great three-point shooting team by any means, Xavier, then now you just put yourself in a hole, not only because he's starting off in a funk, but now your team is starting off struggling. Well, I think really important for Xavier playing at home to make it a physical, drawn, uh, bang-up game, get inside, make uh, Creighton play, draw some fouls. Creighton wants to play a wide-open, free-flowing offensive game. If they get that thing up and down the floor, Creighton can give them problems. Uh, Xavier has a hard time scoring from the outside. Important to force some turnovers playing the open floor. Swing gears, Georgetown at Villanova. Villanova, really impressive. Come from behind win at a tough, tough place. You know, this Creighton. And then Georgetown just jumped on St. John's early. Never looked back. So comfortable win for the Hoyas. But it's a different level of competition with Villanova right now. And you're in the mood to do a little run and gun if you're the Hoyas to try and get a win. Well, first and foremost, you have to play one-on-one -on -one defense. Uh, Villanova's going to try and back you down in the post, get you to help defense and kick out for three-point shots. So important for Villanova to play one-on-one -on -one post defense. Don't overhelp. But I think they need to speed Villanova up. Villanova loves to control tempo. At home, they'll try to keep the game in the 60s. I think Georgetown wants to get up to 70 or 80. Yeah, for Georgetown, it's about the sophomore. It, 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 I know for Patrick Ewing, you'd rather say... As our junior or seniors go, then that's how we go. But it's really about Mac McClung. If he starts that game off thinking, I'm going to shoot jump shots and I'm going to make, you know, highlight film plays, then I think they're going to be in a hole. Yurt Seven has to be involved. Look, I know he's not always most comfortable when he's banging down low, but he is a willing passer and he is a very talented scorer. But you got to put him in that position. This is a, a to me, this time of year is a, a thinking man's game. The problem is you don't have a lot of thinkers in college basketball. <laughs> Guys just go out and play. I mean, no disrespect. There's a lot of great athletes, but you got to think your way early. Mac McClung has to lead. Get your seven involved early. You want McClung involved early. He had 21 of his 24 yeah. in the first half against St. John's when they got that victory. Second half between Xavier and Georgetown women coming your way next.
Xavier hit seven three-pointers to take an eight-point halftime lead on Georgetown here at McDonough Arena. We're at the half here on FS2. She's Monica McNutt. I'm John Fanta, and the former Hoya has a tradition. When she was playing, she'd always take a trip down to... Listen, Georgetown Cupcakes, folks. So this is what I brought, because I want us to have the whole Georgetown experience. This is a total look surprise at this. to look me. Look at this. Let me just, do I need to tilt a little bit? Doesn't These look, look so good. All right, John, so pick a cupcake. All right, I'm going with the chocolate right, and vanilla here. Hold on, let me, let me get you together, friend. I don't you want, should, that because you, I spill quite a you, bit. So. Keep you looking good on air. There we go, Tracy, Monica. Tracy, you want to reach in one? No, no, yeah, okay. That's right, after. Monica, should, what are you taking? Uh, salted caramel. Cheers. Cheers. To some Georgetown cupcakes. Indeed. All right, here we go. And some sweet. Oh, wow, you're all the way in there. That is so good. Let's look at first half highlights, why don't we? Three-point shooting for the Musketeers. That's Nothing, what it was. No cupcakes about these. They came out fire, and Aaliyah Dunham. 7 of 11 from three as a team. And Aaliyah Dunham hit a couple. Sarah Lane, that could get in on the action. The ball moved well for the Davis Musketeer squad. This was one of my favorite, Tish Morgan Sharks in transition. They're shooting the basketball with confidence. They're finding their spots. Quick releases, it's been a thing of beauty. Take a look at the Team Grand Cherokee halftime stats. You see the 7 of 11 from three. Georgetown up on the glass, but how about the way the Musketeers closed down the final 20 minutes? They were locked in and they were focused. We keep talking about momentum, and for both of these squads, looking for a win in conference play, the third quarters are critical. Who will be able to either pick up their momentum if they're the Hoyas, or can the Musketeers maintain it? Who said you have to wait? until the end for the dessert. We're having it at the half. We got some dessert to finish. Stay with us. Big East Women's Hoops coming back.
The Xavier Musketeers looking for the first Big East win in the Melanie Moore era. As we take a look at some of their leaders, Aaliyah Dunham, the engineer. The point guard has been commanding the ship. I think she's made great decisions over the course of this basketball game, and as you see, she's scoring. On the other side, though, John, Brianna Jones came in with the hot hands. Tiana Jones came in and gave a little bit of energy and fire, and then Taylor Barnes finding her teammates. Matt Jordan is going to be a her third team. Barnes had 26 points against Seton Hall last Sunday, just one tonight. Well, on the flip side of that, credit Xavier. Coach Moore said that Barnes was at the top of the scouting report, and so her team has done a good job of communicating and not losing sight of her. Ariana Gray back in after two fouls. Sideline her for the majority of the first half. Only played four minutes. If, keeping that in mind, Xavier should be proud. They went into half with the lead, and your star was not on the floor. So they should. that's commendable. Eight-point lead. Despite missing your best player, it says a lot about the Musketeers and the kind of step this program can take tonight. Six on the timer. Bennett off to Barnes. Just one point in the first half. Short. Bennett with the putback. And that's how you start if you're the Hoyas. Great time Bennett's textbook. Keeping the ball high. Puts it back up on the glass. Doesn't give the defense a chance to swipe away at it. Here's Gray. They love to give her touches, but that time, Caleb are shut her down. She does a good job, Anita Caleb, that is, of keeping her hands high. And so she gets her hand on the basketball without fouling. Not an easy thing to do. Not an easy thing to do at all. I mean, especially and to do it without fouling as Xavier gets the friendly bounce. Jones up to 11 points. The home bounce, if you will. Four on answer for the Hoyas to start this third quarter. You see Aaliyah Dunham commanding the troops. Here's Sharps, the freshman. Went off a double-figure performance against Butler. Gray pulls. And finds a very friendly bounce. Wow, shooters bounce for Gray. You got to credit her for having the confidence to continue to shoot that one. She could be a little bit cold having sat out the second quarter. Gray, six for her last 11 from three. Really developing that part of her game. I mean, you want to be a threat, right? And she is the ultimate competitor. And she said it. I don't care. I don't like it when people slouch off of me. So she tries to keep them honest. I just hear her sprinting down the floor. He doesn't stop. Lion Decker on the dribble. Floater doesn't go. And rebound by Bennett. I like that attack by Lion Decker, though. You've got that type of size to put the yeah. ball on the floor. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And she, was, she literally just kind of puts the ball up a little bit too hard. But it was a great take. 12 on the shot clock here. Here's Barnes. Sworn by Dunham. Top shot. And she hits it. Wow. That, I mean, Dunham was right there. Outside of harassing her as if she were in a half-court full-on press. I mean, Dunham was right there. Big-time shot by Barnes. Chris Paul asked. That's her role model. That is indeed. We asked her who she tried to model her game after. And I, did you see Chris Paul get boogie last night? Mm, man, he passed that ball to himself through somebody's legs. Mm, mm, mm. He's timeless. They've got a foul underneath. So here's Ariana Gray attacking. Anita Kalova, you see her moving her feet and keeping her hands up high. That is a feat in and of itself. But then she's like, okay, you're aware that I can penetrate and attack. I'm going to take this three-point shot. Gets the high bounce off the back iron and it finds its way to the bottom of the net. She said she hates losing. Mm -hmm. And it's just putting more time in the gym. This time an air ball. Happens to the best of us. Losing, I mean, John, losing is never comfortable. And if you find someone who enjoys that, you, you don't want them on your team. She did tell us, though, that part of being able to maintain her encouragement is because of Coach Mel Moore. Mel Moore's energy was conveyed in the shoot-around earlier today. She has her team's full attention. Despite being a first-year head coach, these are not her players, and you wouldn't know it as Mayfield can't get the friendly bounce, and Sharps with the board. Now they look to run. Morgan Sharps did something that's important. She didn't grab the rebound and put it on the ground. She turned and found her point guard. Gray 
with a second triple. I mean, my first face, my eyebrows kind of turned into worms. I wasn't sure about that one. And then it goes down, and I've got nothing to say, John. Let it fly, right? Let it fly, baby. Xavier backed up by seven. Mayfield on the back down. Brianna with a second opportunity. And Xavier comes up with another stop. Donna can flat out fly with the give to Lion Decker. And Lion Decker puts it in. Xavier with its largest lead as Georgetown calls timeout. Is Xavier putting the pressure on Georgetown? They're playing well on the defensive end, communicating with one another. And then, as soon as they're getting a defensive rebound, that ball is going to Aaliyah Dunham, who is pushing it out in front, finding her teammates for high percentage opportunities. We're going to take a break as the teams take a break. Xavier leads in D.C. If y'all giving it to be in, in a position, if you're penetrating and it's a high pass or a layup, give it to her there. You guys got to know what your scripts are and play to the scripts when you're down. Make the correct decisions with the ball. When you're coming down the floor, you have to recognize. You're going to the point. Recognize the defensive front that they're in. If they're in a man, you run out man sets. You have enough man sets that you can call the set out there when you're coming off. You can't call a zone against the man. If you do, you got to play it hard through. Right? When you come out, you're looking at UCLA. You got to play defense and get stops and finish down here. We come down, we get six point run, and then we come down and give them a 9 0 run. You got to play defense and know and commit to your script. Don't play outside of the box. Well, I, you got to play defense. That, that is absolutely true on the part of Coach Howard. Well, Xavier's playing plenty of defense. Ariana Gray with the takeaway and the bucket. She was looking for the foul. Feeling good and attacking. Up to 10 points for the junior. Really blossoming in this second half. You know, this is a good time for Georgetown 
to maybe consider making some adjustments. They've got to find a hot hand tonight. We Consistently, we have not seen one. At one point, it was Brianna Jones who had the ball. Kovacikova is a capable three-point shooter. But it, it just speaks to continuity. I mean, this is a group that has had multiple starting lineups through the course of this season, and, and now you are in a danger zone of a bit. You've got a score here. Ariana Gray, she's taking advantage of every opportunity to be on the floor. Gets out in transition, finishes. The basket is good. Her team leads. Saturday. Xavier on a 7 nothing run to take an 11-point advantage over Georgetown. That has a lot to do with the junior star and Ariana Gray, who's got 8 points in the first 5 minutes of this third quarter. We're just going to go with she needed the second quarter to regroup because she came back in in the third quarter to start the second half on a mission. She's been getting it done defensively. She's been rebounding. She's been taking great shots, and she's been hitting those shots. Xavier lighting it up from deep. They came into tonight shooting 41% from three in Big East play. Best in the conference, and they've kicked it up a notch, if not two or three. I was a few notches, John. And defensively engaged here with 12 on the timer. Georgetown needs a bucket. Jones off on the three, and Lion Decker with the closeout. I like that look by Brianna Jones, though. She has the height advantage over the smaller Leah Dunham defending her. Oregon Sharps. Rebound by Kovacikova. Jones is the best chance for Georgetown to find that hot hand. She came in early in the ball game and I believe scored a significant percentage of the first 15 points or so. Kovacikova off this time and here comes Gray. Xavier looking to run with their new head coach, Melanie Moore, that works to perfection. On the break, it's Terry Gross. Xavier is so efficient when that ball comes out of the net on the defensive rebound. That time, Ari Gray took it herself, but we've seen previously guards grab the ball, finally a Dunham, and the ball is quickly getting up the floor. How about these Musketeers? Playing with some urgency. Pull up for Kalava. Got it. 
That's a spot I think the Hoyas need to look to exploit more because of the way that Xavier is defending. Short corner on both sides. And a 9-0 run for Xavier. Sharps the freshman with the handoff to the veteran in Gray. Gray off the crossover. And we'll head to the free throw line for a pair. While Gray does a good job of drawing the foul there, Xavier's got to do a better job of using those screens. Tomorrow we've got a good one in the Big Ten for you as number 11 Ohio State battles Indiana. Action tips off at 11.30 Eastern on Fox and the Fox Sports app. That should be a good one, huh? Absolutely. Big Ten could have as many as nine, maybe even ten NCAA tournament teams with the Buckeyes playing at such a high level. Michigan, Michigan State. How about the Rutgers Scarlet Knights? Yeah, yeah. Rutgers getting it done. Archie Miller leading the way for Indiana. Caleb Wesson doing his thing for the Buckeyes. Big East though, John. Six in? Six or seven potentially for seven? the Big okay. East Conference. All right, we'll see what you're doing, fellas. Big East and Big Ten putting up big yeah, years. for sure. We'll get a doubleheader on Fox tomorrow. Georgetown needs to snap out of an offensive funk. An 11-2 Musketeer run to really take control of this ballgame. Ten on the timer for Kovacikova. Gordon in off the bench. Hoyas look lost as right. And just in the nick of time, Caleb saves the day. She is so active. Her hands both offensively and defensively, and it allows her to capitalize on opportunities like that. Not many players would do that. Anita Kaleva, a Croatian native, plays for her national team program. Ryan Decca off the catch, and she will head to the free throw line. It was a good cut by Lion Decker. Kovacikova thought she got all ball on that one. The refs beg to differ. What we've seen tonight from this Xavier team is a real response. And we were talking with Melanie Moore about who she's been speaking to in her first season, going through some adversity. And she told us out of the blue yesterday, Sue Semrau, the longtime Florida State head coach, gave Coach Moore a call and said, Mel, I've been through this. I went through this early in my career. Just stay the course and remember, you're the leader of this team. And Mel said it meant the world. Yep, indeed. And she talked about culture mattering. And Sue Simrose got that thing rocking and rolling over at Florida State. That's a top 10. They might be at 11. I'd have to double check. Top 15 ranked program right now. Took a couple of hits in ACC play recently. But that, that's still, that's a group that has been to the Elite Eight twice in the last four years. Melanie Moore serving under Ken barnes Rico at Michigan. And she actually spent time on the staff with now Marquette head coach Megan Duffy. So there's plenty of connections in the barnes Rico tree. It knows no limits. Indeed. We got Coach, uh, what's our guy over at St. John's? Joe Tartamella. Co coach T, you know I love you. I just couldn't think of your name just now. <laughs> <laughs> coach T and the Johnnies played DePaul Sunday on FS1. Mm, that should be fun. You've got that one. Windy City should be rocking. Yeah, that's going to be tremendous guard play as Kovacikova shows that she's a guard to be reckoned with as well, getting that ball to fall in traffic. Back to an 11-point game. Plenty of time. There is, but if you're Georgetown, you've got to play with a sense of urgency on the defensive end. You're not in a position to exchange baskets. Here's Gray, so physical, and banks it in. I wish I could just whip out a ruler just to, to see her elevation. I mean, the kid has... Such natural ability and gifted, as gifted athletically. Does she remind you of anybody? Oh, that's a, let's think. All right, who's she remind me of? Hmm, that's a, that's a tough one, John. I gotta think. I gotta think that. Let's just take a look at this drive while I'm thinking, though, right? One dribble, two nice, healthy steps, and then look at that elevation. She gets up off the ground. She's, she's in the air. She's under control, though, which I also like in that play. She knew exactly what she wanted to do. I'm drawing a blank on comparisons, but very athletic. <laughs> what will be a lot of fun is when she goes up against Shantae Stonewall to Paul. Two Ooh. stretch players who really fight as Grace followed by this drive. That, that's, that is going to be fun. I think if I think of the two of their games, Stone, Shantae that is, has a little bit more of a, a smooth finesse to her game. I think she's a better shoot, shooter. Her shot is a little bit more pure. Ari can hit, but I would say that Shantae is a better shooter. I would, get, I would give Ari the edge in terms of athleticism and strength, but Shantae plays very, very hard as well. Ray up to 14 points. 
She's two rebounds, came in averaging over nine per game. One for two on this trip, and Xavier with the largest lead of the night at 14. Now, comparisons, women's basketball folks can get, it came to me. I actually would loosely compare Ari's body to Maya Moore's body. Wow. That is some high praise from you. She doesn't have the same skill set, and that's why Maya was Maya, and is Maya, she should decide to return to WBA. But in terms of athleticism, I think that's a fair comparison. Somehow the ball stayed in, final mid to this third quarter. Hoy is looking for a first, but it's taken away. Carey Gross said no, and here comes Xavier. The Musketeers have been near perfect tonight, and on the break, they strike. That's Courtney Pranger. Courtney Pranger made herself a big, visible target. Carrie Gross saw her teammate hanging out under the basket, unbothered, and it's a two. The Xavier Musketeers have now won in 64 days. But they just won it tonight, as it'll stay with the Hoyas with 12 on the timer. So much, though, of the energy that we're seeing on the offensive end has been generated defensively for the Xavier squad. Georgetown with eight on the timer. Kovacikova now with five. Looking for Ride and Xavier forcing the shot clock violation. The Musketeers are doing it on both ends. Defensive energy producing offensive confidence. It doesn't always happen that way. A lot of times, players get their energy on the offensive end and then try to drag it into defense. And shouldn't always work that way. But when you've got a team that understands their ability on the defensive side, that's that's something to get excited about. A chance to put the cherry on top of the cupcake, if you will. <laughs> Gross had her shot altered. And with point three, it will stay with the Musketeers here. Time for... A very quick, very quick. Point six, you can get a shot off. I don't know that you can in point three. Gross. That one deflected. Nonetheless, Xavier finishes six for their final eight in the third. And forces Georgetown into a two-minute scoring drought. The Musketeers looking to stop the streak. 30 down, 10 to go. Xavier led by eight at the half, and 
they just turned it up to another level in the third quarter, outscoring Georgetown by that amount. Another level is absolutely right, John. I'm, I'm looking for words. I think if you're Coach Moore, and you've talked about putting it together and being right there today, so far, it would seem that being right there is a commitment on the defensive end, and that is what has propelled this group in the third quarter to create this distance. Major actually dead last in scoring defense in the Big East as Osagi Oresi finishes. But tonight, the Musketeers have flipped that script. Georgetown opting to stay with a man defensively. We'll have to see how they decide to play screens as Marlon Osagi Oresi disrupts that handoff. Former walk-on getting a scholarship for a senior year. Look what I found. It's a lay-in for Wright. Big time baskets to start the fourth quarter. A quick four points. Now, note, the second basket comes because of the defensive intensity that Georgetown brings on that end. And both of those baskets came relatively early in the shot clock. If this team gets deep in the shot clock, they struggle. Now 15 on the time. Dunham. Off to Wasselson, who drills the three. The tenth of the night for Xavier. That, <laughs> Lauren Wasselson got loose, baby, and she cashed money from the corner. She got loose because of the screen communication, and that was, she kind of set the high post screen and then drifted off, and Georgetown didn't communicate. Musketeers with four players with two or more threes, and now a turnover by the Hoyas traveling on Kaleva. Really tough spot for Kaleva to catch the ball. Wasselson, corner, line me up, knock me down. I, I personally love a three from the corner. I love lots of threes, <laughs> so that's not really special. How do you not love the three ball? Listen, if you can't shoot it. <laughs> <laughs> One of us here courtside can, one of us. <laughs> uh, we'll leave it at that. Now a three from Sharps. And just short. Ryan Decker fighting for it and will stay with Xavier. You can almost see the confidence visibly on this Xavier squad growing. How much does that start with their leader? 100%. Because she's had to be the one to maintain it. I mean, you can look at this team's record. Let's not make fluffy what is not fluffy, right? Like, it's been a challenge. We were talking to people around the program this mm -hmm. morning while the team was shooting around. And the support staff yep. said it over and over again. We're going to be okay mm -hmm. because Melanie's energy will take us. Yeah, and, and so it's funny. Greg, the SID, said, oh, you know, day one, I wasn't sure. We'll see. But she's still been that same person. And I think that speaks to her passion for the game, her passion for teaching as a coach. She truly believes in this group. Lion Decker to beat the buzzer. Just long. And Gordon fighting with Wasselson for it. Bit of a collision there. Wasselson in some pain. Jaw to shoulder. Nose to shoulder. I don't see any blood. That's fortunate. Oh. Grimacing. <laughs> Ashley Gomez checks in for the first time tonight. Dunham coming off as well for Gross. So Wasselson can get some treatment on the bench. Gordon for three. Can't hit. You've got to continue to shoot the ball with confidence. You can't stop pressing if you're good down because you're not altering your abilities. Ariana Gray, a machine. The junior up to 17. No ability altered there. She is playing with confidence. Is it, is it time to reveal what she told us in shoot around, John, or is it too soon? It's time to reveal. I mean, she said tonight was going to be tonight, and, and she's playing as if she sincerely meant that. The answer by Osage Oresi. To your point, Ariana Gray's never beaten Georgetown. Hoyas have taken the last seven meetings between these teams, and Ari was tired of that. She gets fouled on the drive. You talked about the energy in Mel Moore. Mm -hmm. She called this a dream destination. Yep. She said Xavier can be a destination because this program has it in its DNA to have success. Just 10 years ago, they went to the Elite Eight and two Elite Eights in the last 20 years. And so, and then on top of that, we had a conversation as you and I both are fans of women's college basketball, not just the Big East. So we asked her about the parody that we were seeing as Georgetown comes up with a big steal and an opportunity here. Jones can't hit. Georgetown cold. Transition basketball. Lion Decker all the way. Jones with an effort. Sarah Lion Decker head to the free throw line. 
That's just smart basketball. Carrie Gross finding her forward, running the floor, easy trip to the free throw line. Parody, women's basketball, Coach Melmore. She talked about kids wanting to be a part of programs that maybe traditionally we don't think of as powerhouses or have not been on the big stage. And so the same applies to Xavier. She talked about the banners that are hanging up in the CentOS Center. I love her vision for the game of women's basketball and obviously where she's trying to take this Xavier program and how she's gone about doing it. Because if Sue Simrao is reaching out to you and telling you that I've been there, done that, and look what Simrao has been able to do, you got to be encouraged. That parody is providing a lot of entertainment. Gray with the hustle. Dunham off to Gross. Offensive foul. Great, because I think that was a better defensive play by Marvelous Osaji Aresi as opposed to a poor offensive play by Kerry Gross. I think that was a solid play, but Marv got there. She beat it to the spot. Marv has not stopped fighting. Yeah, that's the energy that she brings. And that's why she's in this starting lineup. She's really taken the starting role since the start of December. The captains came together with Jimmy Howard and said, you've got to start Marv. We need her out there. Yep, and that speaks volumes. When your teammates go to bat for you. Last time she can't hit. Xavier just everywhere defensively. Yet another stop for the Musketeers. Coach told us that to this point for the Musketeers, their best performance had been against Florida. They lost to the Gators by three. But I think if they continue in the vein that we've seen so far, this would probably trump that as their most complete performance. They came in as Gray is swatted by Jones, but will head to the line. Xavier came in allowing 73 points per game. Oh, about 26 less here thus far tonight. Melanie Moore has kept this team afloat despite the adversity. And looking for a signature moment in her first season right now. Got the birthday song going. <laughs> Call me off guard. Good thing I wasn't on the free throw line because I probably would have been distracted. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you shoot from the charity strike? Oh, I was solid from the strike. I didn't go enough in my senior year to win any awards, but my junior year, I saw it. I saw it like 86. I didn't miss. I don't. I don't. I missed free throws. Do not irk, irk me now because it was something that I lament about my career back then, it's because I made them. Well, unfortunate for George, shot an inbounds violation in a situation that, that was just an easy. Jones put the ball on the floor though, and the officials were all over that. Karen Priado, NCAA tournament referee. Hadn't quite made contact with her point guard. Another foul underneath, and this one on Barnes. That's the fourth Hoya foul, so none left to give. Next one will put Xavier to the line. Lion Decker in a fight oh. for it, and now she's fouled by Wright. And Sarah Lion Decker goes to the line. Shania Wright looked as if she was trying to use Lion Decker to help her get off the ground. Can't do that. <laughs> Credit to Wright for battling back in this game. Had an ankle injury after the first quarter. Indeed, good to see that it is not something serious. Sarah Lyon after doing mom proud tonight. Former Musketeer. And Sarah with 12 points here. Seven boards as well. Her presence got magnified with Gray in foul trouble. Indeed, and I thought she did a great job. She hit timely baskets in the first half, and she's continued to be very active in the second half. We saw her dive on the floor for some loose balls. Remember, she hit the three at the end of the second quarter. And a timeout for Jimmy Howard and Georgetown. They have met a buzzsaw tonight by surprise. The Xavier Musketeers making a statement at McDonough Arena. Uh,
Let's get caught up here in D.C. The Xavier Musketeers looking for their first Big East win in the Melanie Moore era, and they've been dialing it up from distance. Well, 58.8 is rounded up to 59% from the three. The three ball has served this squad well. And then, of course, their leader, Ariana Gray, 19 points so far in this basketball game. Look at how she's done it. Six of 12 from the field. That's 50%, folks. Very, very efficient getting out in transition and attacking the paint. And then, ooh, did you see that? In and out from Aaliyah. Gentlemen, then. Hand down, man down behind the screen, honey. Schwack. Count the basket. Your point guard is leading the way. She's got seven assists to go with that 11 points. This duo is unquestionably the leaders of this Xavier team. Without question, for sure. And tonight they have risen the occasion. Ariana Jones has been the solid force for Georgetown now with 13 points. Georgetown's got to commit defensively. That jumper good for Groves. I mean, they've run into a buzzsaw, as you said, in terms of Xavier and their efficiency tonight. They are shooting the lights out, particularly from behind the arc. But you got to find a way to disrupt that because the clock will soon become your enemy. Barnes off. She's been held to just four points as Wright will head to the free throw line. And that's probably the biggest surprise of the night, Monica. Taylor Barnes after a 26-point outing at Seton Hall. Yeah, your leading scorer struggling to find the bottom of the basket. I am a little bit miffed on why she was out so much in the second quarter without foul trouble, but it's not, it's no longer early in the season job, but I could fathom a scenario where Georgetown is still looking for lineups that work well together. And in the second quarter, we did see some high energy from the five that were on the floor that did not include Barnes, but if you're struggling to score, I think you gotta put your best score in position to get a basket. Kovacikova has not stopped fighting. Hitting the triple, but then a foul off the inbounds. Nikola up to 10 points. That's the other thing. Foul trouble here in the fourth. Yeah, this, this free throws are now compounded as Xavier heads to the line. Musketeers 11 for 16 tonight from the line. Georgetown just 6 of 12. Bonham switches home the first. What have you liked the most about the point guard who's got 12.7 assists? She's been poised. I don't think I, there's a moment in this basketball game that I can recall where she's been rattled. She's been completely poised in, in the huddle. Listening to coach comes out and makes the adjustment necessary, both on the defensive end and on the offensive end, but she's also put her teammates in position to score. Bonham with the give, right with the finish. Need a little bit more of that if you're rooting for the blue and gray. See the poise of Lavilia Dunham. She sees that Barnes is collapsing, waiting for that trap at half court. Well, with T. Owens, a senior, leaving the program earlier this season, that opened the door for the Musketeers and Dunham to really just take the ship, and she's done it. That was solid defense by Marv, though. I will give her credit there. She has and so much about the point guard position in particular is, is mental because you are an extension of your coach on the floor, and that's how Coach Moore described her. And yeah. While that is flattering, it also is one of those scenarios where heavy is the head that wears the crown. Five on a timer for Gray, off to Dunham. Dunham for three, a dagger! That's fitting for the type of day that one Aaliyah Dunham is having. The junior has risen to the occasion in prime time tonight. 16 points, seven assists. Doing it all. Wright can't get it to go, second chance, and that one does go. A little step padding by Janiah Wright. Coming off the injury earlier in this game as Xavier calls a timeout with an 18 point lead here in the fourth quarter. Four Musketeers in double figures. Mel Moore's team has brought their A game. Now only a Xavier 74, Georgetown 56. 
The Musketeers with 11 trifectas on the night. Aliyah Dunham with the basketball right now. Four for four from three. Shot selection. I, I'm really going to think back. I don't think I've seen Aliyah take a bad shot tonight. And you're not a soft critic by any standards, as Gray is fouled. And what? Well, I'm just saying. Okay. Is that a compliment, John? It is. Okay. Tonight's academic ambitions presented by SoFi focuses on a wonderful honor for DePaul head coach Doug Bruno, named one of just 12 finalists for the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame. That's tremendous. Man, we're such big fans of Coach Bruno. That is tremendous. I mean, and you think about how long he's been in the game of basketball. And at DePaul, and he's, he's literally synonymous with women's basketball at DePaul. He has invented DePaul ball. This is that high-octane offensive style. And they don't rebuild. They just reload. Winners of five of the six Big East regular season crowns and four of the six Big East tournaments since 2013. I had a chance to work alongside LB, Lisa Byington, when DePaul and UConn met in Chicago. And a lot of that conversation obviously was about UConn returning to the Big East. And if anybody should feel a certain type of way about UConn returning, it would be DePaul because they have been pretty dominant in their absence. But Coach Bruno is all for it. He is because Doug Bruno, that's why he's one of the 12 finalists, as Kovacikova gets that one to go. He sees the greater scope of the game, and he's done it at every level. Multiple gold medals as well with USA Basketball. Indeed. Working with Gino. Alongside Gino, yep. Indeed, indeed. Wasselson pulls the trigger, and Xavier's three-point party continues. Matching a season high with a dozen trifectas. When she can get that bounce and get into her rhythm, she's fantastic. DePaul, number 15 in the country now. Having a statement year. You consider the fact they only have two losses on the season, Monica, to UConn, who's mm -hmm. number one, will not be on Monday, but to number three, Oregon State as yeah. well. Those are their only two blemishes. Yeah, and that Oregon State game was out on the West Coast. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and it was crazy. In that UConn matchup, Kovacikova hits again for Georgetown, doing her best to keep this team in this thing. In that UConn-DePaul game, I don't really think DePaul showed up until the fourth quarter, honestly. And we saw some big-time baskets from Sonya Morris, some intensity from Shante Stonewall. Make it, they got the lead within single digits, if my memory holds correctly. It'll go back to Georgetown. You're exactly right. DePaul was down by 28 in that game, got it down to single digits. And had Wintrust Arena rocking. Indeed. I mean, folks were really pulling. They did, essentially, they ran out of time. And, of course, credit Gino and the stars that he has playing for UConn this year. They held on. Ryan Decker comes up with it. I'm going back to my critic comment, partner. <laughs> yeah, explain that. You buddy. played the game. Here's Dunham all the way on the break. And Aaliyah Dunham up to 18 points. She's having a great night. I mean, this is what Coach Moore needs for her squad in terms of confidence. When you hand out praise, it matters. Ah, uh, I got it, my friend. We're good. We're all good. <laughs> a timeout for Georgetown. Lots of praise belongs to Millie Moore and her Xavier Musketeers because tonight they have put together an A-game performance from tip-off. A team that came into the night, folks, without a win in the last 64 days. They won their opener back on November the 7th against Utah. And since then, a couple single-digit affairs, a narrow loss to Florida. But tonight, what's changed? The three-point. The three-ball! I wish you folks could see us at home during the three celebration that Aaliyah Dunham <laughs> showed off earlier in the basketball game. She's hyped for Lion Decker there, knocking down the three. Then Morgan Sharps get in, gets in on the action. You get a three, I get a three. Corner three off the inbound. Cash money. But again, John, I don't think that this can be overstated. It goes to the confidence that this group has in themselves and one another and the confidence that Coach Moore is instilling in them because it could be easy and no one would blame them should they be a little bit down on themselves having lost so many games since November. Musketeers are at Villanova on Sunday, an FS2 appearance later this month in Friartown to take on Providence. How about that matchup Sunday at Villanova? You've got Mary Gadeka and Maddie Segrist for the Wildcats. Segrist, the National Freshman of the Year, Freshman of the Week.
week earlier this season. On the other side, you get Ari Gray. That's great forward play. Now, you also potentially have lots of shooting to take, <laughs> take in in that basketball game. We know what Coach Peretta does, and this is his farewell tour of sorts. His team is playing hard for him. And then if Xavier can keep up this type of shooting, there's going to be lots of shots going up in that ball game. Gray put it on the floor. Asagi Aretsi was waiting for it. Here comes Marvelous. One of the best names you'll find in the sport. Indeed. Cut off by Lion Decker. Gray won't stop. Up ahead to Dunham. Xavier on the break. Call night. Xavier has been terrific when they get out in transition as well. They're making smart passes. They're finding one another in the lanes. 22 fast break points for the Musketeers to just seven for Georgetown. And the Hoyas told us transition was their key. Yeah, sometimes you can have a key and not be able to turn it for whatever reason. And that's been the case for the Hoyas tonight. Pass picked off. Final 90 seconds here. Big picture for Xavier. What do you make of this group? Allow this win to show you what you can do. Now, granted, every team you may not match up with as well. Ari may not have such a terrific night. Aaliyah may not have such a terrific night. But you got to see, we can do this. We have what we need. And that's what, honestly, John, that's what Ari told us in after shoot-around today. And so now you finally see it. This is what happens when we put it all together. Transition basketball. Your forward passing ahead to your point guard. You love it. You love it. Ariana Gray, you see Dunham come off with 20 points and 7 assists. What a performance for the junior. She could be hearing from the Big East on Monday with a conference weekly honor. It certainly could. I mean, got to put it together. They've got to we'll face a tough Villanova team to round off the weekend. I'll explain how tough that is to go Friday, Sunday. Ooh. Okay, first let me just talk about how tough it is to play Villanova because I, for one, John, I had to sit on the bench when we played Villanova. All them screens and cutting and flipping, I literally was spinning around in circles. They'd just be like, pop, sub, come on over here, Monica. The quarter three and Xavier has their most triples in a game this season with 13. Wasselson with her fourth. The quick turnaround is maybe not a favorite, but I do think we got to be mindful that these are student athletes. And so as soon as you get accustomed to it, I think your body adjusts. And Saturday practices typically are, bear in mind, there's a game on Sunday. You got some homework to get to, mm -hmm. practice, shoot around. But for Xavier, it'll be a fun bus trip to Philly. Indeed. That one goes for Bennett. Final seconds here. The Xavier Musketeers have not won in 64 days. You see the fans behind their bench with an ovation. This is a night of what can be for this program. Xavier gets its first Big East win in the Melanie Moore era. Congratulations to Coach Moore, instilling confidence in her players. They came out tonight, they executed, they found one another, they were focused and locked in. It, it's gotta feel good to snap that losing streak. The streak is over. And Ariana Gray said it's going down tonight. Well, she backed it up. 20 points, four assists. Joining her point guard, Aaliyah Dunham, with 20 points and seven assists. And Xavier's dynamic duo powered them to a much needed victory. One that they will look to bottle up going forward in Big E's play. We'll wrap up.